Hey, good afternoon, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is James Lowther. I'm head of visual arts for Break Visual Arts. And it's really exciting to see everyone today into making this kind of virtual connection between uh, Rani and Lulia in Sweden and Berg von Tweed. It's, uh, it's wonderful to see everyone here. Um, I'll just talk through a bit of housekeeping and then also just kind of the, uh, the plan for the next hour that we're going to talk through. So it'd be great if we can just make sure that they have their um, microphones turned off during the, uh, the um, presentations. If you want to leave your camera on or off, that is fine. If you've got any questions throughout the whole session, just pop them into the into the chat and there'll be time to come back to those uh, at the end. And we can have there'll be a, a QA at, at the end of at the end of the sessions. Um, we are going to try and keep this to one hour, but we've got quite a lot to get through, so it may go on for a little bit longer. Um, I think um, we'll just kind of there's five of us who will be speaking um, throughout the session, so I think we'll, if we just do some quick intros from each one of those people, and then I'll just talk through the quickly through the schedule for the day. Hannah, do you want to start? Yes, hello everyone and welcome. My name is Hannah Isaksson and I'm the manager of Resource Center for Konst, a resource center in uh, Arctic uh, Sweden. I will tell you a little bit more about it. And I'm also the project leader of Swedish Lapland Artists in Residency. Javier, do you want to go next? Should I go next? I'm Javier. Hi, everyone. How are you? I'm, ha I'm Javier Rodriguez. Um, I guess I'm one of the instigators of this uh, project uh, in between um, the two locations. Um, I've been living in London for half of my life, and I've been working quite often uh, or for like a number of years in the uh, northern regions for a number of like, yeah, three years or something. And, and then I will follow um, after this uh, you know, short introduction to the stories uh, about it. Mats, do you want to introduce next? You're on mute, Matt. Okay, now unmute. Uh, yeah, hello. I'm Mats Wikström, artist, musician from North Sweden, uh, Roneo area, uh, Roneo small small town or small village, a couple of thousand people. And I live six kilometers outside Roneo in the forest. And have been the Roneo part of this uh, collaboration. Yeah. Great, thank you, Max. And finally, Morag. Hello, I'm Morag Eaton in Berwick One Tweed. I will talk more about myself in my presentation about current artistic practice. But I would like to say that it's a real pleasure to be here today and to see everyone on screen, whether it's uh, visually or with your names. I'm pleased to be able to do this international link up and I hope you find what we talk about interesting. Thank you. Great. Right. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Um, so, just the kind of the um, the kind of schedule for the day is that we'll just try and initially just kind of do some kind of scene setting and talk about a little about um, Lulia and Ranio and, and Berwick and set the scene and then talk about how the residency came about, how it kind of changed and evolved due to COVID, and then after that we'll move on to um, Max and Morag and they'll talk more about their collaboration and the. Uh, the, the work they made and, and, and what happened during that kind of um, digital exchange. Um, and then we'll do some uh, questions at, at the end of that, at the end of that session. So um, first, uh, Hannah is going to give us a, an overview of, 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 of um, Lulia and, and, and her work, really just a brief one. Hannah, over to you. Thank you. Let's see if it works. Okay, so I will just do a short presentation of Swedish Lapland Artists in Residency. Uh, we are a young network of residencies in the region and the project has been going on for about four years now. So, uh, but my job is at the, the region and I work at the 
resource center for contemporary artists and craftsmen in this region. So I also do uh, education programs, development projects, exhibitions, public art projects and so forth. So residencies is just like one part of my job. Um, but uh, this is a picture so you get an understanding of where Romeo is uh, compared to Bavik and also compared to uh, the rest of, of Europe. So we are in the very top. You have the polar circle going just above us. Uh, so right now we have this really lovely summer nights here. Uh, the area is quite big. It's uh, one fourth of the total area in Sweden, actually. So it's 14 municipalities. And the, the dots that you see is where we have uh, residences in the region uh, at this point. Um, it's about 260,000 people living in the total area. And in Luleå, the biggest city, it's about 80,000 people. But uh, Jokmok, that you, you can see up to the left, one of the biggest municipalities, only have around 5,000 inhabitants. So it's uh, a mix of, of uh, small cities, villages, and some bigger cities uh, at the coastline. And we have borders to uh, Finland and to, to Norway. So to be able to, to run residences in this uh, big area, we build up a network. And it looks a little bit different in the different municipalities. So depending if you have an institution in the municipality, or if you have an artist-run initiative, or um, uh, an institution like an art gallery, the residences look a little bit different in, in how we build them. Uh, we have, for example, we have a production residency in, in Luleå. Uh, we also done uh, sound art residencies uh, in Um So it's a very broad network and, and uh, we can, yeah. Uh, help each other to do residencies in the areas. Uh, so this is a picture of some of the people in the network and some of the institutions. We also have a biannual uh, that restarted 2018 that we worked quite a lot with. So the next biannual is uh, next year. And the industries up here is that the artist likes to come and do research about, I would say, is mainly mining, um, forest industry. We have a huge uh, car testing industry. Uh, tourism, of course, before the pandemic was like the biggest growing industry up here. Uh, and we also have a big military industry. Um, and this is some people in the network when we were celebrating uh, after one year that we had conducted 10 residencies in our first year. So it's really a big uh, group effort, I would say, up here to, to run our residencies. And you can read more in our website, SwedishLaplandAir.com. So I stop share there. Amazing, thank you, Hannah. Ten residences in one year is really, really, really amazing, really impressive. <laughs> okay, um, I will now just share my screen and give some uh, context to uh, my um, uh, visual arts program in Berwick upon Tweed. Can everyone see that? Okay, yeah. So. I run a visual arts program called Berwick Visual Arts in, um, in Berwick upon Tweed, which is in the county of Northumberland. Um, so you can see uh, where the, the red is, is, is Northumberland, one of the largest uh, kind of rural counties in, in England. And we are right at the top of that county um, on the border with Scotland, that we're about two miles from the border with Scotland, and we are England's most, um, most northerly town. 
um, just that gives you kind of a better kind of overview of, of, of Berwick itself. Um, we've got a population of about 13,000 people in the town, and you can see from that photo that the main part of the town is kind of enclosed by um, med medieval and Elizabethan town walls. And then beyond that is the River Tweed, which runs from Scotland down into the, into the North Sea, and some kind of further conurbations uh, uh, beyond the, the main centre of the town as well, really. Um, Again, similar to, to what Hannah was talking about, the population, about 6% of the population is employed in the service sector here. And so again, there's a kind of reliance on tourism and very much so before, before COVID um, as well, really. Um, but also there's, there's, his, there's histories of kind of salmon fishing and, and, and shipbuilding and manufacturing and also a lot of kind of agriculture um, within the area as well. So, Again, much like Hannah, I kind, of, I kind of run quite a wide program, which consists of um, exhibition, an exhibition program in, in two gallery spaces in the town, a former a gallery program in the gymnasium gallery, which is a former military gymnasium within, within um, some uh, um, a former military barracks within the town, and also uh, an, a, another gallery called the Granary Gallery, which is situated within, within the youth hostel in the, in the town. But I'll just focus on our um, residency program as well, um, which we've been running for about uh, well for about eight years now actually, um, and it's a slight, it's a it's a different model. But one 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 of our key kind of um, uh, uh, kind of residency partnership models has been to work with our local university in Newcastle, um, in the Centre for Rural Economy, which is a research centre um, kind of exploring uh, rural issues and 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 making kind of um, the rural economy sustainable really, and. And the model of that residency has been about an artist and a, and a, and a researcher kind of collaborating and working together to explore um, kind of pertinent rural issues. You can see a list of, uh, a list of um, some of the recent uh, arts residents here. Um, and this is our most recent arts residence, Joanne Coates, a documentary photographer, who was specifically looking at the role of um, women in agriculture and um, the challenges and barriers they face within that sector and speaking to a lot of um, female farmers across Northumberland and, and, and the county to kind of um, to, to respond to that really in, 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 and research that. Um, now I forgot to do a contact details slide if anybody wants my contacts then I can we can certainly um, circulate those. Okay I will I will stop sharing my screen now and I will just um, I can talk a little bit more about how, how the kind of connection and, 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 and the connection with Lulia came about because I think it was the, the starting point of that kind of residency, um, that rural residency kind of made me think about um, kind of other rural areas and, 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 and um, how we can use kind of our rurality as a connection to, to, to other rural areas internationally really. And I was kind of quite interested in that kind of that, that idea of the local and how we connect that beyond Berwick to, to similar places, kind of regionally, nationally, and, and internationally, really. Um, and Hannah and Javier, please do uh, chip in to this, this part as well as I kind of talk a little bit about how it came about. I think I had to do, I had to do kind of quite a lot of research just to, to find out where I needed to kind of navigate myself in, in, into another kind of north rural area and how kind of how kind of far north I could get to really. Um, and to do that, I had conversations with the Arts Council England, who are, who we my program is primarily funded by, um, and they are kind of the 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 our kind of national arts funding body really, and also the British Council. And they kept two conversations. They kept kind of navigating me towards towards Sweden. So I thought, well, I need to do some kind of more 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 research there really. Um, and they gave me lots of contacts of people to speak to. Um, and I think kind of in that process, what you're kind of looking for is trying to find an organization that kind of feels similar to yourself or has kind of shared aims, objectives, um, and, and just it feels like that you can make a, you can make a connection with really. Um, and so some people I spoke to, I, did, I didn't feel that that was there maybe so much, but I had a really kind of um, productive conversation with Hannah who gave me lots of ideas and, and thoughts and, and said, you know, come, come to Lulia. And this was in, I think, November, 2018. There was, there was, um, Hannah's residency program, which I think was really interesting. There was the Contemporary Art Day Summit happening in Bowdoin. There was the Lulia by Biennale. So it felt like a really kind of interesting time to go there and really kind of find, find out about what was happening in, in the art scene. So I, um, 
and booked myself some tickets, some plane tickets, which seems seems quite a novelty now. But I did that and um, and, and came over for the for the for the Biennale. And it was during a visit to Northern Sustainable Futures that I then kind of met um, Javier, who was doing who was doing um, some some work there, and and we we started a conversation about whether we could make um, a link between between the, the, the two places really with 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 Hannah's support as well. Um, and I think from the next logical step from that was then to invite Javier to to Berwick and to find out kind of what what what, what Berwick was about really and whether whether we could draw some similarities. So I don't know whether you want to talk about what you find in Berwick, Javier. <laughs> Definitely, <clears throat> definitely. And, and hi, and thank you for the introduction, uh, uh, James. And yes, indeed, um, that's kind of like a part of the little story. And I just like run quickly a, a little bit about myself and why I was like, you know, in the Nordic region and the kind of like, certain, you know, polar circle kind of thing. Um, I'm an artist and a culture producer, and I'm very interested in um, the rural dimension and traditional culture as a kind of space to learn from and really apply in a more scalable manner. Uh, regenerative systems and sustainable discourses in a more kind of like practical manner and then I've been trying to apply kind of you know social innovation and sense making strategies uh, as alternative uh, alternative tools um, to you know for micro societal change and in this uh, sort of you know uh, journeys um, I was invited by um, this small organization uh, part of Swedish Lab and Air called Northern Sustainable Futures and that's how I kind of you know got in the first place to North Bottom and that's how I met Anna uh, and then, you know, throughout that uh, year, uh, which, uh, you know, we witnessed a lot of activities in, uh, in the region, you know, the Lulia Biennial and actually Matt um, as a kind of a counter um, sort of, you know, um, response to that um, event. He did his first uh, Rania Biennial, which was like, uh, I found it really fascinating uh, as a kind of alternative, very like mini rural sort of biennial in a very small village. Uh, you know, um, engaging uh, artists uh, that were, you know, working um, in a local, you know, in a local context. And um, so um, during this time, I was, as I said, you know, like we, I got really acquainted with uh, Swedish Lab and Air and, uh, and we, you know, I was trying to kind of develop a program that will, you know, kind of reflect uh, a sense of place, uh, craft, circularity, community engaging, etc. And then in these conversations with James, when we met, uh, very fortunately, uh, up there, then, uh, yeah, we started to exchange ideas and then um, kindly invited me to bury up on tweet to uh, do a little kind of, you know, field work and see what I find out in this uh, rural location, which I've never been, um, even though I lived in England for like 20 years. And to my surprise, I was like, really, I mean, it was like a very beautiful month, uh, in all honesty. Um, I met... Uh, wonderful people and really like the dynamo uh, that actually connected me with everybody in the creative community of Berwick was Morak and, and Dave um, with their, you know, well, as you know, like they, well, will, you will know, they run this uh, lovely uh, gallery in the central uh, part of town. And they were really, really kind to me in like, you know, facilitating really all sorts of connections and, uh, and discussions and very interesting sort of, you know, dialogues with the, uh, the local, um, you know, uh, community really and um, I found it a very diverse uh, place um, even though you know the, the size of the town is just like minuscule and uh, and I really kind of fell in love really uh, with the place as well as I was already kind of you know very fascinated by the whole you know um, creative input that was happening in Lulia and in the Barents region as a whole and and that thanks actually you know to Hannah. Hannah has been like incredibly uh, conducive and it's been like really um, you know, like the main connector really for, uh, for all the work that I've been uh, managing to be doing up here uh, in, um, in, the, in the north. And that, uh, that whole kind of process left, you know, left to, uh, to this kind of, you know, um, ideas to, uh, you know, to, ex to make exchanges in between the artists. In these trips, I met Matt um, very early on on my trips um, in, uh, in Coco Bay, actually, which is one of the Swedish Lapland Airs um, residency spaces and they make this kind of production sort of, you know, it's like a kind of a community uh, led uh, studios where you can make a lot of, you know, different type of uh, production work from sculpture to welding to uh, printmaking, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, and we started to have a conversation and, you know, like, I mean, I really liked him first as a, as a personality, as a human being and as a kind of artist. And we kind of then, you know, like I found out about his, um, 
you know, work with the um, Rana Biennial and that really, you know, blew my mind. Like, you know, this kind of like, you know, very daunting move to actually, you know, make um, some such a, you know, biennial in like, you know, in this like, you know, obscure little village for, for us outside, uh, you know, Sweden. Uh, and then uh, I found it that it was a very successful uh, activity and initiative. And, uh, and then, you know, the whole kind of thing um, kind of fell in place somehow. Is that sufficient for now? That's good. That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Javier. And I think, yeah, you know, all those, all those, all those kind of ideas that you're talking about, kind of like about, yes, yeah, kind of rural sustainable communities and and, and and how I work with that. So I think that's something we kind of shared and felt was both quite rooted in 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 both places, really. So I think that's kind of where we felt there was potential to develop. And I think I think from that point, obviously, we envisaged a kind of, a, a very much a kind of physical exchange of artists between the two places. And we were very much kind of ready to ready to go with that in in, um, in February. Um, but obviously due to COVID that, that, that couldn't happen. So we had to kind of, uh, well, kind of, we had a pause and then a thought, and then we thought, well, you know, I think we felt it was important to try and make some connection, really, um, and, and and the most obvious way seemed to be to do that digitally, really, um, and to offer opportunity for 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 two artists just to connect digitally, because in some ways that's kind of all 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 we could do at the moment, and just to kind of start a conversation, really. So we gave Mats and and Morag, um, just a bit a bit of time each to connect um, via Zoom and just to have a have start a conversation and and. And find out about each other's each other's practice, um, that their kind of rural context, the places where they live, the communities that they work in, um, and not necessarily there was no pressure from us to kind of to to make work either. Really, it was really just we really just wanted to start a conversation and see where and see where that might lead, and then and then um, hopefully it's something that we can then kind of build build upon in in the future. Really, so I think that hopefully that kind of sets. Um, some some context. If you have any questions about that, just pop them in the chat, and we can come, we can come back to those at the end. I think it'd be good to hear from. Uh, we we could probably talk forever about this, but it's good to hear from uh, Mats and Mats and uh, Mats and Morag really. Um, Morag, do you want to talk a little bit about, a little bit about your, your your practice first? Really, would that be okay? Yes, that's fine. And um, before I start, can I uh, apologise for anybody in Sweden if I massacre? Uh, the names in any way, but I have learned to pronounce Ronio properly, I hope. Brilliant, that's better than me. Yeah, Max is nodding, thank you. Right. Now, uh, I am actually reading from a script uh, because I wanted to try and avoid the er uh, and ums and you knows of uh, conversation for people whose uh, English wasn't their first language. Uh, but I'll try and uh, and prevent it from feeling wooden. Right. So I'm an artisan, printmaker, and partner in an independent gallery in Berwick on Tweed. I work mainly in monoprint and relief print in my studio at the rear, rear of the gallery. To be able to do this, I do a creative juggling act because I have to make work which is commercially viable without compromising my creative integrity, while at the same time producing work which is 100% creatively mine. Fortunately, the two often overlap. For the past three years, I've been creating work in response to the wife's lament from the book of Exeter. This is the first known female voice in English literature. The, the narrator, being a wife whose husband has not returned from traveling. And the narrative is their anxieties and imaginings. This is the period when ambiguity entered into English literature and the different inter interpretations is what I find so absorbing in the poem. The contemporary translation is by Naomi Siemens, a New York poet and translator, and I can see her on Zoom. Thank you, Naomi. Uh, our most recent collaboration is for Ancient Exchanges. This is an uh, online translation publication, uh, which is uh, design-wise, it is a stunning piece of work. So 
please Google ancient exchanges and look at the publication with uh, my prints and novice translations in from the Book of Exeter. Thank you. We've worked on other collaborations together. And normally, normally would have been buried for, for a time, but of course the pandemic has stopped that. But I continue to work, Nomi, and I will send you some images shortly. Uh, so as this residency finishes, next week I start working on a commission around the Polish refugees in Langham Army Camp. Uh, they were resident there after the war because there was a reluctance to go back to Poland because part of it was the responsibility of Russia. And uh, uh, most people know about the, the, long, uh, the long march, the long war from Poland to Russia, which many Poles had to uh, undertake under uh, Stalin's dictation. Uh, so uh, Langham's about 70 miles inland from Berwick in the Scottish borders. And in Langham, many of the Poles married uh, Langham lasses, and this commission is to celebrate their presence in the Scottish borders. So I'm going to be working on the themes of work and play as two large relief prints. But I will just end by giving a plug. You can look at my work and my Dave's work on our website, foldyard.co.uk or on our Instagram feed foldyard. Thank you for listening. Brilliant. Thank you, Marag. Do you want to, can you put links to your website in the, into, into the chat? I think that'd be really good for people to, to have a look yes. at. Yes. Yeah. And Matt, do you want to talk a little bit about your, your practice for us next? Unmute. Okay, I I try, but I have to warn everybody that we, especially men, I think up north are famous or well known to be uh, talking uh, slowly, and uh, in English it's even worse. So, well, I try. That's okay. Maybe, maybe uh, the the speed will increase. Uh, I, I will try to show you some pictures. Is this visible? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of pictures here. But uh, now we will not uh, talk about uh, this uh, particular exchange. No, just, just a bit about you as an artist and an overview of your practice yeah. is, is good yeah. to know, really. Yeah, I can... Uh, uh, the Ronio Biennale was mentioned, and uh, I can show you... This is a picture from the church of, of the... Well, an exhibition from 2020, the, the second one, the small... Uh, 2018 uh, was a very small one. I, I, I rented a, a business, uh, a shop in the center of Roneo and uh, uh, had an exhibition there. This second time we had some money. Well, we had uh, rather good money. Uh, but still not as much as the Lulio Biennale, of course just a fraction but uh, and we have no art hall so but we have a, a church and and the, the priests and other people in the church uh, uh, was willing to host this uh, exhibition so this is um, what was uh, exhibited in in last year autumn and uh, the the services uh, was taking place with this uh, present so 
except funerals. That, then I had to take it away. Uh, you can see the burning sofa instead of the burning bush. And, and uh, this is a sandal of glass. Uh, this is Lotta Lampa pieces. This is from breaks. Uh, car, car culture is, is a big thing in, in this area. And uh, they have events every Monday. They do burnouts in the center of Roneo. It, it's a big um, Skådespel, what's the name? It's a big, big thing. <laughs> People with cars come from all over the area. And uh, well, yeah, it's mixed with folk art and uh, well-known Swedish artists. And most of the pieces are mine. I have a, a collection of specially folk art that I exhibit now and then. And this is maybe my first artwork it was taken 1966. Me behind the Kodak camera. It's on the uh, exam exam day in school in the in the spring and uh, very strange that me and my family dressed up went to the forest <laughs> and uh, had some kind of hike a couple of hours in, into a national park outside this Oh, it, it's uh, Arbisjar was mentioned by Hanna. And uh, this is uh, later, a couple of years ago, sold as an art piece. Well, here you can see I, I have worked a lot with myself, images of myself, and I, th I think it has been some kind of uh, training for life. I, I, I have put myself in situations with my art that have de developed me as a human being. This is an old photograph where I live. I have this uh, stone on my, just outside the house. And this is my father standing here. And this is my, his sister, my aunt, and her husband that was living, he is from this area and they bought this place. And when he died, my, my aunt didn't want to be here anymore. So I, I had it, they don't have any children. How many minutes more do I have? How much time? Inte så mycket nu. Well, recently what I've been doing in art, uh, so I sit on the evenings uh, at home, but this is made in New York two years ago, but I, I still do this small aquarelle paintings almost every night as I sit. You see, this is a big one and a small one. I, I first did the big one and then a, a, a little bit smaller one. Uh, I like them. And uh, if I don't do aquarelles, I do wood pieces uh, with knife and uh, chisels and uh, so this the, here they are put together and um, this about uh, me maybe not exactly me but how is the situation for an older man like me we, we suffer <laughs> this is also a picture of me here and 
narrative maybe that can be understand backside that's uh, how high is the quality of the work and this course is is the story of the work and it's white flag i think that's uh, i i um, surrender for all this but when i had made that one something very strange happened this this spring this piece was sold to the modern museum in stockholm and it's so it's so uh, well strange and fantastic uh, it's a little bit more than three meters high this is from arbro konstal in the art hall in the middle of sweden uh, uh, two or three years ago and uh, after a week when they had when they said we buy that one uh, the the curator um, phoned me and said we also buy this video <laughs> Yeah, did you hear the? Yeah, that was a, that was uh, amazing. It's about uh, it's made uh, eleven years ago, and and it's like a self portrait to be a artist in in this area. Um, Brilliant. Yeah. So so, uh, well, yeah, two pieces to the modern museum. It's. Uh, it's yeah. just really, really exciting. Really and really and this fun. happened. Uh, this happened during uh, our, our speech. Uh, the, so, so I can, so I could uh, tell more about this. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you for that, Matt. Um, should we? Should we just kind of? Should we talk a little bit about the, the the exchange that you you and um, Morag did? Um, so I don't know. We can we can all chip into this conversation, Javier and Hannah and, and Marag as well. Um, do you want to kind of talk a little bit about how you uh, you both have very, very different practices, really? But I think there's kind of similarities about how you the similarities about how you kind of work within within your kind of uh, local environment, but your practice, practices are very different. How did you kind of approach the the residency in the in the first place as, as a kind of digital residency, which is a very kind of new new thing, really? Uh, well, my initial concern was obviously that we spoke different languages. Um, although obviously creative arts is somewhere a universal language and it felt very different having to get to know someone in a virtual sense, though uh, Matt's was very welcoming. Thank you. And you were too. Thank you. Uh, uh, he's, uh, Matt sent me photographs of David Vigran's poem Skogel, Skogen, Malman, Battencrafton, and English that's the all mine, the forest, the hydropower, which is said typified the north of Sweden. And I use this as a basis from which to produce work. and. Uh, in exchange, I sent Matt the book of uh, horoscope translations at Nomi and I made together and some of the particular Japanese vinyl that I used. So it wasn't just digital online, there was also a, a physical uh, exchange as part of it. Yeah, that, that's interesting. So there was a need to, there was a need to kind of send something physical to each other that kind of made it feel more more tangible, I guess, really. Yeah, I, I, I felt so. <laughs> Especially when I, I saw the book on, on, uh, on Messenger, it, it made it more real, more real. Uh, but it did actually take about three weeks to get there. It's COVID, blame COVID. And what, what, what did you learn about each other's practice? Did you learn any similarities or 
different yeah. so. Uh, I know uh, I'm speaking instead of maths, but uh, what I would say, what I did learn was that it's uh, we in the north of England uh, feel as uh, as though uh, uh, London has forgotten about us, and that's very much uh, what uh, Matt's uh, film what was was about. Yeah. Yeah, and can I chip in um, just now, um, just with this kind of questions, um, 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 James? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, just, you know, just, just, just like a little bit revising, like, you know, for, for me, one of the most significant aspects uh, or interest, you know, for, for me uh, of interest in forwarding this dialogue um, proposal in between uh, Morak and Matt um, was, you know, the fact that, you know, having met them in both places um, and realizing that, you know, the role that they have played in their respective communities, as I was saying before, and also uh, both uh, artists having a very, um, you know, rather particular interest in folk culture and traditions. Matt, for example, as I was saying before, with the Rane Biennial, um, you know, being an important and progressive um, initiative for a small rural locations such as Ronia, and uh, and also, you know, his uh, ongoing work in collecting folk art and. Um, and you know he's been curating or has curated very important exhibitions in uh, in Norbotten in um, Habre Magazine, for example. And uh, and on the other hand, Morak also you know um, as I was saying before, you know Folger at the gallery and they and the, you know them as a couple, Dave and and, and Morak, uh, you know acting as a sort of you know uh, beautiful like you know the benevolent uh, energy attracting uh, you know um, note in uh, in the community in the in the in the um, in the gallery in itself, and also, um, you know, you in our conversations when I was in uh, in Berwick, you told me a lot about your interest in uh, in folk, you know, and related mythical cosmologies um, uh, that you have been kind of you know implementing in your work. So um, it will be perhaps be interesting to hear, um, you know, what kind of from that aspect uh, in, in the digital exchange, if you had, um, you know, this dialogue or this dimension of, 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 of this, you know. Part of the work that you do uh, came into play, um, you know, um, with you know, and yeah, if, if you actually had any kind of exchanges on that on that respect, and also uh, you know, both community-led work and folk art traditions, and also uh, it would be very nice to hear uh, why you know you have chosen to reside uh, and operate uh, from these peripheral locations. You just like mentioned that you know, uh, uh, London has forgotten about you, and uh, or you know, like. Well, that seems the case, and uh, of many rural communities and artists, and and that's for me personally why I'm interested in in kind of operating in this uh, in these uh, peripheries, uh, as well as you know this question goes to Matt as well. Uh, well, uh, what uh, what I would say is there's a, there's a lot to unpick in what you say, Javier, but basically I I, I learned that being an artist in both countries is a challenge. And it's interesting that Mats and I are roughly the same age, and it's only as we've got older that we've been able to make a living from our art practice. But it's just not about making work uh, and selling work. It's about being able to take on other creative roles like curation, workshops, or, or commissions. Uh, th that, that was interesting. Um, so, uh, I don't, Max is very quiet. Perhaps you just say something. Okay, <laughs> I, I tried. Or I will talk something. forever. Yeah, for me, I can start with uh, the reason I'm here is uh, I mentioned that I, I, I had uh, this house from my aunt, but uh, it was from uh, during the years from 2000 just for vacation. But I, I divorced 2017, and that was the, the reason why I moved here and, and uh, lived here permanently. So, so it's just, uh, uh, I haven't really uh, thought about now I shall enter the outskirts of, of uh, <laughs> this area, but... So, so it's more a coincidence. So, but 
I, I have found myself uh, very, very. Uh, I, I like the. I like my house and the wood and 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 the village. It's uh, two kilometers, one and a half kilometers, and and I have been welcomed by the people here, and I I haven't really felt as home as much as here before in my life uh, considered to the area it's 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 possible to to work with art here it's possible to to get people interested and uh, it's uh, i mean it's also not that crowded of, of people working with this kind of things cultural things so so it's uh, it's an open field for mm. for someone like me and that's a good thing i think i i would i would never have done this in in Lule when i lived there for a long time it's uh, it's uh, can I pick up on what Max has just said about feeling at home and comfortable in a place? This is how we feel about Beric von Tweed. For those who know us, uh, they will be aware that we moved uh, here uh, because of Dave, my business and life partner, having a severe heart attack 13 years ago. Our intention was to go for a slower pace of life, but it didn't quite turn out like that. Uh, but because Beric is so laid back and we live and work on the same street, the pressure is not the same. Uh, running a gallery is hard, but it's not as hard as commuting to work to do a demanding job to pay the mortgage or living somewhere where you're not happy. Beric is very supportive never experienced uh, uh, that's the atmosphere that we find in Berwick. Um, thank you, that's my input on, on that matter. Thank you. Amazing, thank you. I think we are, getting, we are running a bit short of time. So do you want to, Mara, do you want to share, share the work that you made first? Okay, yeah. right. Right, just bear with me because it's gone a bit funny. Sorry. Well, we can go through. Yeah, it's all right. It just went a bit funny okay. there. Yeah. Let's go and share sound. All right. So. Right. Is that okay for everyone? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Right, so, um, as I said, uh, Matt sent me a poem by David Vigran, which is Gogan Malman Vattencraften, and it's a hundred page poem where the three words are, uh, are on a, a, a scheme are rearranged. Uh, throughout the, the entire book. And uh, so this is a photograph that Matt sent to me of the book. And I took this as a starting point. So this is Malman, the All Mine. Uh, there's a set of four monoprints on Japanese paper. Now, I like to work from real life, but as we were in lockdown, it was impossible to travel anywhere in the country. Uh, we do have mines and quarries of this nature. So unfortunately, I had to fall back on using photographs of the mines in northern uh, Sweden. Oh, it's Karuna, maybe. Uh, yeah, so it's a monoprint, it's quite large, and I don't normally work that large. So it's a good opportunity to do something slightly different. The forest, uh, this is mixed media piece. It's uh, panels of Japanese paper, which have been colored with printing ink and then 
the tree shapes are stitched on top of each individual panel and then joined together ultimately. Uh, because it was so large, I had to work in panels. And uh, again, it was the pleasure of being able to do something slightly different from the printmaking techniques that I normally practice. But yeah, it's quite a big piece uh, and I enjoyed this a lot. And this is the final one. I wanted somehow to replicate the noise and movement of water hitting a surface. So I, I may use curled and, and coloured Japanese paper. So it's quite large. It's, it's uh, about, um, what is it, two metres long? And here we go on this one. I think that's enough. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, Morag. Thank you. I, I very much enjoyed doing the body of work. It's nice to be challenged in a different way. It was, it was a good decision to send me the poem. <laughs> Great. Max, do you want to do you want to share anything for you? Yes, yep. I can share once more. Um, first, this one, um, I mean, uh, Murag was the one uh, in charge of the callings. She, 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 she's more organized than me. And uh, this came to me, <laughs> this idea, and I started with the lino. So, so I, I have been, uh, been cutting the text, uh, but then I, I, I and, and the middle, I, I plan to do a silk screen, but I, I, I changed my mind and made this uh, digital picture barrack um, upon tweed calling and uh, how we uh, looked <laughs> in the in the screen during we had a couple of meetings all four of us uh, and, uh, i mean it also can be uh, maybe a, a picture of what we do in the society during this pandemic instead of going to concerts with rock bands. Uh, that's uh, the first. And then with the uh, Morag sent me uh, material, this uh, green, it's, it's kind of, it, it's a Lino, instead of Lino, it's uh, called something Japanese, not something plastic and uh, well and uh, so I used uh, the these plates and and did prints on the envelope it came uh, so this is one side uh, this uh, bigger picture so so it's I also like this uh, with this uh, code and uh, the text and the queen and the air mail, and my my uh, address name and address well printed, and uh, other side like this custom declaration and 
And this uh, pattern is like, looks like uh, something from the 50s or 60s. So that was the, the works beside our talk. We, we talked a lot about, well, our life. And uh, that has been a very interesting thing to, to talk to more. And, and uh, sometimes her husband he came now and then and uh, to uh, learn to know someone. I never had met otherwise this project. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mats. That's yeah. great. Also, one more thing. Yes, go I mean, when, when I was going to present uh, Morag uh, pictures and uh, things from here, I had to walk around and, and look in, in a new way of, of my surroundings and what I had in the bookshelf. And uh, yeah, that was also an interesting part of this to, to look at my own, uh, well, what I have around me. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. I guess that, I guess that is really, yeah, how collaborating with different artists can, can enable you to see things in a, in, in a, in a very different way in your kind of every, everyday life for you. I think that's really, really valuable, actually, really interesting. Um, we are coming up to two o'clock. If anyone has any questions, you can pop them in the chat or you can put your hand up on screen. One piece of one question is coming from Claire Ward, which was, what was the source of the sound of sound for the water piece, Morag? Yeah, that's Dave holding a hairdryer underneath <laughs> the noise of the movement. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it, this is sort of really basic stuff. You just need to think what you need to get the effect you want. You don't need a lot of tech. No, it's like those, those kind of BBC. Wonderful. I <laughs> love that. That's just great. Will, will, will there be a joint exhibition? I think that's definitely an ambition that we would like. We would like to do that. We would like to show some work in Berwick and show some work in Lulia as well. We really want to try and work towards that so we can share it to a, to a wider audience, definitely. Was, was, was that question that came in via email as well, Hannah? Have, have we answered that, do you think? I think we'll be having was a question from Norma uh, yeah. uh, about the matching process, linking the artist yeah. uh, rather than similita similarities or both. But I guess it was both, maybe. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think it was yeah. a, a combination of them both, really. Mm. Definitely. Definitely. Um, yeah, definitely both for sure. And, yeah. uh, you know, like, I mean, and both, yeah, 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 but both artists kind of embedding uh, so much of like, you know, the, their, their locality in, in, in very particular ways. So, I mean, I mean, it was kind of like, for me anyways, it was really um, kind of very clear, the, the, the kind of match um, in, between, in, in between Mats and Morak, uh, having met them before and, you know, and kind of like both their kind of like way of communicating to the outer world uh, felt like, you know, from, from Berwick and from sort of Ronia was like a really good uh, sort of, you know, bridge really to, uh, to start this like, you know, um, experimental digital dialogue really. Mm. Right. I think as, as an, as an org organizer, I feel that this has been a really good residency with a nice outcome and it's um, a start of a new collaboration, I think. And I hope, of course, that we can meet each other soon uh, uh, and um, travel and meet each other. Okay, nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, and I think, you know, I think it, 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 I think it's been really interesting to find out because we, I think we see a lot during the June COVID about digital work and working online now, moving work and work online and having collaborate digitally. I think it's really interesting to find out how it, how it actually works and what are, the, what, what, are the, what are the benefits of that. And I think, so I think that's been a really, it's been a really valuable learning process for us all, I think really. So I think that's, that is, that is really good. And I think a big thank you to, to Matt and Marag for, work, for being willing to, to take part in that really, definitely. So maybe around. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. Pleasure. If there's, nothing, if there's nothing else, and I think we'll, is that, yeah. does anyone want to say anything else, Anna or Javier or Max or Mara? Well, I just want, 
Yeah, I, I mean, just personally, just wanted to really thank uh, everybody, really. I mean, uh, Pana, foremost, uh, you know, for your, you know, continued support and uh, for sure, um, you know, James has been a, a bastion of, uh, you know, also of, uh, of support towards, uh, you know, this dialogue to, to happen. And also, you know, for sure, um, you know, I'm just so glad that this uh, actually, you know, moved forward uh, into kind of a reality, even though it was a virtual reality uh, so far. And I will be very, very, uh, you know, looking forward and, and hope that, you know, um, new potentials and opportunities for exchanges uh, in between the two regions continue to happen in the foreseeable future so that we can actually do something, um, you know, uh, in a physical scale and, uh, and kind of celebrate uh, that aspect as, as well of, of, you know, of everybody's practice and work. And uh, it has been really, really lovely. Yes, I think that would be, it would be Thank great you. to do that. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank bye you. Bye-bye. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye